I uh, just want to thank uh, Clive and Craig uh, for their passion. If it wasn't for that passion and that belief and desire to help Australia, we wouldn't be here now. Uh, interesting story, I actually met uh, Craig uh, around 2014 when he first came and actually did a ribbon cutting for my business uh, out in Western Sydney in Moorbank. So I've been kind of following him and been aware of what's going on for quite a few years. So when he finally uh, joined the party, it, it just seemed like a natural thing for me to do to join the party. And I'll go into a little bit what drove me from just becoming a member to becoming a candidate. But what it was, was seeing that his morals, his beliefs, his position never wavered. What he was saying long before the pandemic, he was saying afterwards. He believed in Australia, he believed in the people, and that really convinced me to kind of jump on board when I was looking for an answer. Now, I'll very quickly uh, mention, as Julian mentioned earlier, we have some fantastic candidates here, and I've met some really great people. We've worked together, as he mentioned, we come together every week. Uh, I just want to say a special thank you to Julian because not only has he given us use of his business to, to meet each week, but he's given us pizza. Like, I, thank you very much. <laughs> now, um, I come from a, a migrant family. My father actually had to uh, cross the border. It was back in the days when Croatia was Yugoslavia. He went under gunfire. He became a refugee in Italy before he came to Australia. He brought my mother over to come and settle and create a new life here in Australia. He wanted to make a family and give to them what he was not able to have. And he believed in what Australia was, the freedom, the opportunity, the chance for a better life, not just for him, but for his children. He instilled a great work ethic in me, um, along with my mother. They, they worked day and night to give us what they could not have. Yeah. I took that on and I've worked um, in various parts of industry. I've been working in the government, um, some of the largest firms in the world, and I reached a point where I actually wanted to open my, my own business. So I opened up my own business and I started building a future for myself but like many of you, a future for my children. And with these lockdowns in the last two years, everything my father and my mother slaved day and night to give me has been taken away. They took away our freedom, they took away our choice, and it was the first time the government actually came into our homes. They told you who you could or couldn't have in your homes. They started interjecting in what we were doing in our own lives. It's one thing to, to talk about the community. It's another thing to go straight into our families and move them out of the way. So the reason I'm running is because like many of you here, I've suffered during the last two years. I've probably suffered it in as many ways as, as you are here. My first uh, son was born the first month of the first lockdown. So we were in lockdown, my son was born, and my family could not come and see. They could not share the joy of what was going on. My mother was in Canberra, and even after the lockdown was over, she was terrified because of the, the message that was going through. She, she was afraid to come to Sydney because the fear came, campaign was so strong, she thought people were dropping dead on the streets. And so for six months, you know, I didn't get to share the joy of having my own child with my own family. And then on top of that, I run um, a martial arts school, which is health and fitness. And we learned very early on that the comorbidities to COVID were related to health and fitness lifestyle activities. Yet, thank you. Yet, businesses which promoted healthy living, better nutrition, exercise, outdoor activity, mental strength, were shut down. My business was the first to be shut down. 
and they're one of the last to be open. So that struck a discord in my mind and okay, um, I let that kind of go and then we moved on. But what happened was I was supposed to open a business just before the first lockdown and for reasons not related uh, to COVID, it, it didn't get to open. But thankfully I had all my finances pre-approved, everything ready to go. So I just had to kind of wait till lockdown was over and then I could continue to open my business after lockdown opened up. But what happened? After the lockdown, when I tried to move forward with my business, all the finance companies had cancelled their pre-approved finance. They're like, no, we, we're, we, can't, we can't do it. We have concerns that the fitness industry is going to be shut down again. And I'm like, it didn't make sense. It's like, we should be promoting fitness. We should be sending people to these places to improve their health, to lose their weight, to get their insulin or sugars under control, to make themselves healthier so when the pandemic really does hit us, we can face it head on. But no, they said no. And so I had to go out and find all sorts of new finance. Ended up, instead of having one or two loans, I have nearly a dozen loans with interest rates up to 16% because I've had to get lease purchase type finance and it's put a lot of strain uh, on me. I finally got my business opened. A week later, we got shut down again for the second lockdown. Same thing, fitness was the first to get shut down, and the last one to open. And then during this time, obviously, the government has offered uh, assistance with grants and things like that. So I've applied for all the grants as I did the first lockdown, which um, kind of kept me going and I nearly recovered from that first lockdown to get caught with the second lockdown, but now I have two businesses and I also have one and a half million in finance, which I'm trying to um, keep afloat. And because my finance got canceled, I had to mortgage my house to bring, I wanted to keep obviously my, my home separate from my business, but I had no choice because I could not get the finance or the support. During this time, um, you know, I'm stuck at home, my business can't run, I'm not making any money. And then finally we open up again. Thankfully, the grants have just managed to kind of keep me going. And I've been very vocal. I'm not afraid, I'm a fighter. I fought professionally uh, for Australia. Now I'm up here fighting for Australians. I've faced a lot of adversity in my life. As I said, I came from a very poor family. I'm used to it. I'm used to the ups and downs. I'm used to debt. I'm used to difficult times. I know that if I believe in myself, I can achieve anything and I can get out of any hole. And so I've come out of the second lockdown, worse position than after the first one. And I've gone, I'm not giving up. So I keep fighting, I keep working. And then I'm being vocal and then all of a sudden I get ordered. The New South Wales government has gone, oh, we have to order you and check on your, on your grants. So I'm like, yeah, no problem, books are open, here's all the information. And then they've come back and gone, look, sorry, the second business doesn't um, comply, you know. I can't provide financial history to demonstrate that I've made a loss. Even though I've been shut down, made no money, um, I still have expenses that I have to take care of. They've gone, it's not good enough. Bad luck, sorry. We're going to have to pay back um, half your um, grants. So it's about $100,000. I now have got the government uh, debt recovery chasing, for me, chasing me to try and pay off as well. Then my partner lost uh, her job because of mandates. But it's even sadder than that. She didn't actually lose her job. She still has it because the company she works for hasn't mandated it but the companies they work for have. So all they're doing is just not giving her work, which means she can't apply for any sort of support because she hasn't lost a job, she's just not getting work. So I'm suffering there as well. Um, during the lockdown, I went and helped a friend um, and I left my LGA out of concern and I got arrested. They didn't care what the reason was. So again, I've got that coming up and I've, I'm challenging it in court and then that will be coming up after the election. And just, just one thing after the other, my business opened up. 
And then I had police coming every second day for the first two weeks saying, we've got reports saying you're an anti-vaxxer and you're breaking the law. Now we weren't, we were complying, we were doing everything that was asked of us. Um, we had our staff following the rules, we had all the posters on the wall, and the police were saying, there's nothing we can do. We got the reports, we've got to follow up. But of course, they're harassing my staff, they're harassing the members, making people feel uncomfortable. So people were afraid to come back. So again, affecting my business. And just all these things compounding one on top of the other, I finally had enough. I'm not one to complain. I'm a man of action. So I said, I'm a fighter. I joined the Australia Party when I saw Craig had joined. And finally, when I had enough, I said, it's time to do something. The only way we can make change is get on the inside and make that change. So that's why I applied to be a candidate. And I am proud to represent my electorate of Blacksland. As I said, I live, work and play in that area. I've had my business running in Western Sydney from the inner west to the western sub southwestern suburbs for 20 years. My home is in Blacksland. Um, I know many people in the community. I have a very diverse community, even within my own business. And I hear the voices of what, what's going on. These people, they come to me. Um, because I'm kind of seen as a, as a, a figure, figurehead. Um, they complain to me, they talk to me about what's going on, and I felt that they needed a voice. So that's why I'm up here, because Australians, Western Sydney, need a voice. We need to be heard, we need to make a statement. Uh, earlier today, I was actually just at a, an official opening um, for the Turkish place, which is a new little uh, restaurant um, in Blacksland. Uh, I went down, was there, it was a fantastic day, meeting people from the community, talking to the owners and other people. And at the end of it, the owner wanted some signs and stuff, so I went and grabbed um, my uh, UAP signs and gave it to him, put them at the front. We're still just chatting, and just out of nowhere, this uh, little man comes running along and goes, what's that? I saw that yellow sign, what is it? I'm going, well, the United Australia Party, you know. We're running for this election, and he's like, oh, this is Jason Clare's area. And I'm like, well, not for much longer. <laughs> uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Elvis Sinisic. I'm the candidate for United Australia Party, running here in Blackson, and I'm here to be the voice of the people. And then all he goes, oh, Clive's doing a, a deal with the Liberal Party. Clive's doing a deal, you know, we're gonna be spreading that, we're gonna let everyone know about it. And I'm like, well, no, that's, that's not true. I go, you guys are doing a deal with the Liberal Party. I go, here's the, your how to vote cards. The Liberal have Labor, the number one pick on their how to vote card. Labor have Liberal number three, because obviously they're working with Greens, but it's Labor, Greens, Liberal. And then everyone else underneath, I go, what's this? This is collusion, is it not? How is this a two-party preferred system? How are we being honest to the system when the supposed two major parties preferencing each other. How, do, how does the community get a voice when you're taking that choice away? And all he can go is, oh, you've got deals going, you've got deals going on. I'm going, explain what's going on here. He goes, oh, you guys are preferencing Liberal. I went, well, no, actually. We have a, a Labour strong seat in Blacksland. So we actually preference Labour ahead of Liberal. So obviously in some electorates you've got to have Labour ahead, some electorates you've got to have Liberal ahead. If I'm going to get the votes of the Labour people in my electorate, they need to feel secure. If I don't win, at least it's not going to go to Liberal. So we have Labour ahead. And I go, well, explain that. And his explanation, similar to Julian's experience, he just turned and ran away. So these parties are working together. Vote the majors last has worked. It's terrifying. This is why they are blatantly disrespecting the community with their decisions here. They're taking what should be a fair election and trying to subvert it so they do not lose control. They want to keep power. What we want to do is return power to the people. I cannot win on preferences because of what they've done. 
So I'm going to win on the primary vote. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to talk to the people. I do not care. I will not.